Hare Krishna. With the Chandrayaan being launched by India and its live launch on YouTube and other places, uh, social media attracting uh, record viewership, those who are followers of Srila Prabhupada can often get questions. How do we reconcile his statements about the moon mission with what is happening in India and what we are seeing? So in this session, I'll take in, talk in three parts. First is what were Srila Prabhupada's statements? Sometimes only one particular statement is attributed to him that he said that and did not go to the moon. But actually Prabhupada made a wide variety of statements. So we we'll look at those statements. Then we'll see how do we make sense, harmonize these various statements. And then we can see how we can move forward from the position that we are in at present. So let's look at some of the quotes of Srila Prabhupada. So here we'll see the basic statement that Srila Prabhupada broadly made was that he said that our going to moon is like illegal immigration. His point was not so much that technologically the spacecrafts, whether they can go to the moon or not, that was not his, his question. His question was, his objection was not objection to science per se. It was from a higher dimensional perspective. At the moon planet from the Shastra, we understand that nobody can go there unless he's fit. Just like to enter into some foreign country, you have to take visa, you have to take passport, immigration, then you will be allowed. So such attempt to go there, and if you go there, you will be driven away. What is the use of such attempt? So this is Srimad Bhagavatam 5.5.5 lecture, Stockholm, September 10, 18, 1973. So that is the key thesis. Now, Prabhupada also said other things went they went, but they couldn't stay there. And practically we see they are going to the moon planet, but they cannot stay uselessly going and coming. So, and practically we see, so Prabhupada is not denying what is being seen through the practical vision. This is a lecture on Srimad Bhagavatam 611124, Melbourne, May 20, 1975. So he's saying that what is the use of it going there? What it meant was that at that time, if you look at the broader context at that time, there was a hype that will not only go there, eventually it will be like a, the moon will be like a tourist destination, the routine regular spacecrafts will be going there, people will buy land on the moon and have their own uh, resort and retreat center. So none of that materialized even half a, half a decade after Prabhupada, that, that event happened, which Prabhupada speaking in 1975, that event happened in 1969. And now, so Prabhupada is pointing the futility of it. Then again, he is not denying that they went. They are going to the moon, but what are they doing? Now, Prabhupada significantly says that with their advanced consciousness, human beings are naturally inclined to travel in outer space and to reach other planets, either by spaceships, mystic powers, or demigod worship. In the Vedic scriptures, it is said that one can reach other planets by any one of these three ways, but the most common ways by worshiping the demigod presiding over a particular planet. This is purport, Ishop Mishat 12. So, that spaceships can take us there is not something which Prabhupada is denying. That's one of the ways. Now, another thing my point Prabhupada said is that they were diverted elsewhere. So again, one of if you have got some machine to reach there, they have got some machine to divert you. Why not think like that? That these rascals are coming here without any immigration license. Let them be diverted to the deserted portion and disappointed, they will go back. Lecture Nectar of Devotion. Bombay, December 28, 1972. So here again, Prabhupada is saying, okay, they went to the moon, but they didn't actually access the moon. Uh, so he gives the example that suppose illegal immigrants uh, come into a country and they're not stopped, then they may not they they may not be stopped in coming into the country, but they may not be wanted in the prosperous elite parts of the country. They might be sent to some remote backwater kind of the part of the uh, that country and that's what happens in America when immigrants who came in were taken transported to some place where all the elites live there's a big UN cry so and they were immediately sent away from there to somewhere else so there's diversion so again there's no denial that they went but they were diverted now of course this is the statement which is most commonly attributed that it is a hoax the word says was all this a bluff Yes, they are here. They are all laboratory work. That's all. 
you all made it up so yes and yes so again now we might say this is the final position but Prabhupada said exactly the opposite also they went there but didn't get much out of it it is not like that after spending many millions of dollars you go to the moon planet and touch it and bring some sand and you're satisfied you see don't waste in that if you go live there lecture on Srimad Bhagavatam 552 London September 17 1969 now in the introduction to the Bhagavad Gita Prabhupada makes the statement that modern man has struggled very hard to reach the moon but he has not tried very hard to ever elevate himself spiritually if one has 50 years of life ahead of him he should engage that brief time in cultivating this practice of remembering the supreme personality of God in it. so the focus is on endeavoring for spiritual elevation not for material elevation so we see a range of positions that Srila Prabhupada has taken. Now, how do we make sense of this? So when we have to harmonize various positions, one could be that we absolutize. This is what Prabhupada said. Prabhupada said man did not go to the moon and that's all. Anybody who does not accept it is having no faith in Prabhupada, no faith in Shastra. That person is doomed spiritually. Well, when Prabhupada has made multiple statements, on what basis can we say that our faith in Prabhupada is to be judged by only our faith in one statement of Srila Prabhupada? Which statement is to be absolutized and on what basis? So when Prabhupada himself has made multiple statements, so that is one extreme of the pendulum is to absolutize. The other extreme would be to relativize. And we say actually Prabhupada didn't know. Maybe at that time Prabhupada has made different opinions, so he was just guessing. And now we accept Prabhupada when he is talking about spiritual subject matters with material subject matters. Well, you know, he's, isn't, he's not an authority. Once he started going in the direction of relativizing, then it's a slippery slope. Then which statements are to be relativized and who decides that? So our guidance from an authority source of wisdom will be lost. It's a slippery slope. So we have to be careful. We don't want to go to that extreme also. So in between absolutizing and relativizing is contextualizing. That means we look at the specific context. When was this spoken? And more importantly, what is the underlying universal purpose for which this is spoken? So how do we contextualize this? Now for that purpose, we can say that we can look at three broad principles. This is mission, movement, when was it spoken, and movement, the forward motion. So M-O-M-E-N-T and M-O-V-E-M-E-N-T. So the mission that Srila Prabhupada started was the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. It is not the International Society for Moon Conspiracy Exposure. Now that was incidental. If we consider Srila Prabhupada's teachings, there are primary teachings, secondary teachings, there are tertiary teachings. Now, how, how do we decide what is primary, secondary, tertiary? Well, we don't decide. We look at what Srila Prabhupada himself has said. Srila Prabhupada said that among all the, the very name that he gave to his movement was International Society for Krishna Consciousness. The seven purposes that he had when he started the movement were, were all centered on this theme of Krishna Consciousness correcting the imbalance of spiritual values, creating facilities where people could come together closer to each other and closer to God, distributing literatures. So in none, neither the name nor in the seven defining purposes does Prabhupada talk about exposure of moon conspiracy. So that is not his central teaching. And so, so we have to make sure that what is a secondary or a tertiary teaching doesn't distract us from the primary message so the the mission is what is to focus on then we may say okay if it's a secondary or tertiary statement uh, then why was it even made then for that we look at the movement m-o-m-e-n-t when was it spoken so it was spoken at a particular time in history when there was huge hype and excitement about humanity's conquest of space. 1960s were characterized by the space race between the two big powers in the Cold War, USSR and USA. And America ostensibly won the space race. And people were literally, people, people believed that they were on top of the moon and they thought we were on the top of the world. This is the pinnacle of humanity's success. And Prabhupada was 
Prabhupada's focus was don't get distracted from all this. Yeah, okay, whether this is, whether somebody has gone to the moon or not, the important thing is that we need to elevate our consciousness. That was his primary focus. So that was a distraction. He wanted to challenge that distraction. And now, again, Prabhupada's, Prabhupada's statement was not anti-science per se. It was from a different perspective that the Chandra Loka is a higher planetary system. And we cannot access it. We cannot get crash into it. We cannot be illegal immigrants in the heaven. So that was a very different from an anti-science kind of tirade. So if we consider that existence is multi-level within the Vedic texts, that means that we can see our physical body, but beyond the physical matter, there is subtle matter. And then beyond that, there is spirit. So for gross matter, subtle matter and spirit. And our perception is largely limited to subtle gross matter. So, so now the higher levels of reality, like the heavenly planets, they exist at multiple levels. So they have an aspect of them which could be visible at the physical level. But they have an aspect to them which is not visible at the physical level. Just like our existence, our body is visible at the physical level, but the mind and the soul are not visible at the physical level. The same principle applies to celestial bodies. So Chandra Loka is a higher planetary system. Now, some aspect of it is visible to us as the moon planet. But we are perceiving within three-dimensional space. We have our senses which can perceive gross matter only. So we are perceiving basically a gross replica or a gross image of what is a multi-level reality. It's gross and subtle reality. It's like we, if we have a map of a particular territory. So if we have a map of a particular territory, now the, the map itself is not the territory. If somebody moves their finger from Mumbai to Pune, they are not actually moving from Mumbai to Pune. The map is a replica. So it is a useful replica for certain purposes, but it is not the actual reality. So similarly, what we perceive with our senses is, is a partial replica of Chandra Loka. And that replica, what we perceive, exists within the domain of gross matter. But there is more to the moon beyond gross matter, or more to Chandra Loka beyond the gross matter moon that we see. And that is inaccessible to us. So that was the thrust of Srila Prabhupada's teachings. And the key point is that the moment, that particular moment is no longer there. And when we are trying to share spiritual wisdom, we need to focus on what is obstructing people from going toward Krishna. So there are people here and there is a wall, there is an obstacle from going from them going toward Krishna. And whatever is the obstacle, we want to remove that obstacle, help people remove that obstacle. So with respect to the moon issue, no, there could be people who say that some some people who say astronauts went to the moon and some people say no absolutely they didn't go some people who can say that it's a hoax others can say that oh actually they didn't even go out of the earth and no you are wrong but the key point is we choose to keep moving toward krishna that is what is important for us so the movement our forward movement toward krishna should not be distracted by either uh, infatuation with the moon mission or suspicion about the moon mission. So we have to know which statements remove obstacles and which statements can themselves become obstacles. So there could be a wide range, given that Prabhupada has made a wide variety of statements, there could be an acceptable range of positions that are all faithful to Srila Prabhupada. So somebody might say that, okay, astronauts went to the moon, somebody said they didn't go out of the earth also. But whatever be the position on a temporal issue that we accept, given that Prabhupada had multiple positions, the key point is we keep moving toward Krishna. And that is something that is Srila Prabhupada's focus and that is his gift, the facility for doing that that he has provided. 
So by Krishna's mercy and by Shri Prabhupada's mercy, irrespective of whether man went to the moon or not, whether man goes to the moon or not in future, we can still keep going beyond, beyond the moon, further beyond to Krishna's eternal abode. So to summarize, Prabhupada, Prabhupada, faithfulness to Prabhupada should not be reduced to one statement that man did not go to the moon because Prabhupada made various statements. And in trying to harmonize those statements, we don't absolutize or relativize, we contextualize. And to understand the context, we look at what is the primary mission that was Krishna consciousness, not, not anything to do with the moon. And what is the moment when these statements were spoken when Prabhupada was here? The hype over the moon issue. So that could have been a distraction. And the moment, the key is how can we keep moving forward toward Krishna? So there could be an acceptable range of positions that different devotees, followers of Srila Prabhupada may accept uh, with respect to their own understanding. And they can still keep moving toward Krishna without making this uh, issue an issue of faith or an issue of inordinate confrontation. Thank you. Hare Krishna.